Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. Today we're gonna pick up uh, where we left off on our meat series because today we're doing some salmon. I'm gonna do this four different ways, just like we have done the pork and the beef. Two different ways cooked and then rehydrated after freeze drying, and then we're gonna try it two different ways, raw, then freeze dried, then cooked. We'll see what the results are, so let's get started. So every good cooked fish or smoked fish, in my opinion, starts with a good brine that keeps all of the tenderness, keeps that fish from getting dried out. It also uh, keeps it juicy and it really helps keep everything tender by holding all of the juices in. I would imagine that would uh, also pertain to freeze drying as well. That's very important in freeze drying, especially pre-cooked meats, it seems like. So a simple brine, this is the brine I use for basically everything, fish, pork, whatever I'm cooking. Four cups of water and then a third of a cup of salt, and then one cup of brown sugar. And then you're gonna whisk this until all of this is dissolved. Once it's dissolved, we're gonna pour this over the salmon, and then you want to, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to totally be submerged in this, but it does help. And we're gonna let that sit for four hours in this brine. And I wanna make sure all four ways that we're doing this today have been brined and that way we're kind of all on a level playing field. Four hours in the fridge and I'll see you in a second. This has been brining for four hours now. I saved about four cubes for ice cube trays of the brine because I'm gonna save that and freeze dry it and then we're gonna use that to rehydrate and, uh, and then sous vide the raw version of this. Uh, I also saved back another little bit just to put in the sous vide bag just to keep the, uh, the moisture in the fish while I'm sous videing. Uh, otherwise, you can drain off all of the salmon that's been brining. You wanna rinse all the brine off or it's gonna be really, really salty. Then I take a paper towel and I just dab all the extra kind of moisture and everything off. And then I'm going to cut this into four pieces. Two are gonna be raw, and then we're just gonna freeze dry them raw, and those will both go onto their own pan. Typically, I don't mix raw and cooked meats together. The other one is gonna go into the sous vide bag, along with just a little bit of liquid that we saved back of the, the brine. And then I sealed this. This is gonna get clipped to the side of this pan. I'm gonna fill it up, and then I'm gonna cook this at 115 for 45 minutes. So our raw salmon, I'm gonna put a lid on it and put it in the deep freeze along with our two or our four cubes of our brine so we can rehydrate it. And then our last piece of salmon is gonna go onto the smoker at 180 until we reach 145. Well, the sous vide is all done. It's been going for about 40 minutes now. I'm gonna cut this open and drain off the liquid and then it's gonna go right onto a freeze dryer tray after that. Very, very tender. I've marked that it's the sous vide side. I'm actually gonna take this skin off as well. This is a really thick piece of the salmon, so it might be interesting for rehydration. So I think the smoked salmon actually has a couple hours still. So in the meantime, I'm gonna put a lid on this and I'm gonna uh, start freezing it. And that's something that we do wanna talk about for meat is you're gonna to wanna to pre-freeze probably at least for 24 hours. The liquids that I'm pre-freezing right now need to definitely go in for 24 hours. You want those to be solid ice before they go into the freeze dryer. So we're cooked to 140. I actually cut it to 140 instead of 145. I think if we just under cook it just a little bit, that's probably better, but it looks really, really good. It's already, it's falling apart, which is a good sign looks really nice. Show you the difference between the two out in the daylight here. Uh, this is our sous vide, this is our smoked. Obviously you can see kind of the, the smokiness look to it. They're both just completely flaking apart. So they're basically perfectly cooked at this point. Hopefully we can freeze dry them, get them right back to where they're at right now. And the first thing we need to do in order for that to happen is we need to freeze this all the way through. And then uh, as soon as it's all frozen, We'll go into the freeze dryer and uh, with the raw ones as well, and we will try and rehydrate all four of those uh, being cooked four different ways. Okay, we're so ready for some freeze dried salmon. Make sure that you take a minute to subscribe to Live Life Simple if you have not already. We do primarily freeze drying on this channel. 
And while you're there, make sure that you click the bell to uh, get future notifications every time a video comes out. That's Sundays, 8 a.m. for us. And if you like the content we're putting out there, make sure you let us know by giving us a thumbs up. And you can find this salmon recipe as well as almost 300 other recipes at freezedryingcookbook.com. And you can also check out our hard copy version. This has about 110 recipes in it. Uh, you can find that at Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Or you can go to freezedryingsupplies.com and uh, also find it there. And speaking of freezedryingsupplies.com, make sure you check that store out. That's where all of the accessories and supplies in this video can be found. Uh, we're a small business. We're an American company. All of our products are made in the USA. And that's something that we're very proud of. If you have any questions about freeze drying, uh, you can join our social media groups. We have about 70,000 members on there right now. Uh, our Facebook group and our MeWe group, it's just retired at 40s freeze drying group. If you're thinking about purchasing a freeze dryer, it'd be a huge favor to us if you would use our affiliate link. It helps us uh, keep this YouTube content coming. It helps uh, upkeep our social media groups and do giveaways and things like that. It also helps us develop new products uh, to streamline freeze drying. And I think our salmon is just about done. So these salmon fillets have been in for 21 hours and 21 minutes. And I'm actually gonna use my thermal camera on these. This is a good candidate for the thermal camera because these babies are thick. So you can see that this one in the corner right here is the sous vide. It is actually reading 50 something degrees. So I think just to be safe, I'm gonna add just a couple more hours on them. I think that they're probably fine, but just wanna make sure. All right, now we're looking good. Here's our two raw. And then here is our sous vide. There's our smoked. And I'm gonna get right into rehydrating these raw salmon. And I'm gonna do it the fast way. I'm gonna do it in the, uh, the Avid Armor vacuum chamber sealer. That makes it rehydrate very, very fast. If you don't have one, uh, usually a couple hours, three hours, sometimes four hours, depending on what type of meat you're doing, should completely rehydrate these. So the one that we're gonna sous vide is rehydrated now. I just put a pat of butter in with it. Uh, I sealed off the bag. I also put probably about an ounce of our brine mixture that we had before. This actually will rehydrate some as it cooks as well because it's gonna cook for about 45 minutes. Uh, our grilled one is a thicker piece because I figured that we want the thicker one that we're rehydrating to go on the smoker. I was originally going to just rehydrate these quick the problem is they're not rehydrating quick. Uh, the thin one that I'm putting in the sous vide that's actually going right now, that one's pretty thin and it was, uh, it was pliable just like it would be when it was uh, fresh. This one that I was gonna put on the grill is very thick. It's about probably three quarters to an inch thick and it just seems like it's not really rehydrating very well. So I'm gonna let it sit for a while. And in the meantime, I think I'm gonna try and rehydrate the cooked ones uh, while we're waiting for these other ones to cook and rehydrate themselves. And I did also check into what other people's experiences have been with salmon. Most people say that they did not have good experience with raw salmon. I'm hoping that I can change that. Right now it's not necessarily looking like that's gonna happen, but hopefully the cooked salmon is gonna be just fine. So to do that, I'm gonna put uh, the smoked one in one side, I'm gonna put the sous vide one in the other side. And while I was doing this, I kind of decided that I really wanna try what this tastes like before it's freeze dried. It looks raw, it's been sous vide, it's actually really good, and I think I can already tell that this is gonna rehydrate uh, very good, very tender. One thing I am noticing though, there's definitely grease or oil from the salmon on here. Long-term storage of salmon, probably not a great idea. It will vary from salmon to salmon, from you know filet to filet, but I'll let you determine whether or not you're going to try and store this for more than uh, just short-term storage. So before I rehydrate with water, I actually took some melted butter and I'm gonna pour a little bit of melted butter and I'm hoping that that'll just soak right into the pores of all this fish. The smoked salmon looks really good. And I think I'm gonna let that sit on there first just for a couple minutes. And hopefully it'll just uh, soak in all that buttery goodness. And now I'm just gonna take some warm water. And before I do this, you can check out, this actually soaked up all the butter really fast. There's a little bit left on the sous vide, but the, the butter definitely soaked into there, which is cool. 
hopefully we can taste that as we uh, rehydrate this and taste it later. So I'm using warm water, don't use hot water. You don't wanna recook this. You just want warm water. And what I'm hoping is that the cooked stuff will rehydrate much, much faster. You can see the, the air bubble is already happening. So the water soaking in, getting into those pores, rehydrating. One thing I'm noticing right away in comparison to other meats is that this definitely takes longer to rehydrate. This is still not hard, but it's, it's definitely not rehydrated yet. Uh, the smoked one did have a little bit of a crisp on it just from smoking it. And this is pretty fascinating to me because I thought that salmon would actually rehydrate very, very quickly. Uh, obviously this is a very thick cut of salmon. If they were in cubes or something, they might do a lot better. But I do know that both of these were cooked uh, very well. They were flaking off very easy. I mean, you could just pull it apart with a fork. Our pre-cooked sous vide freeze dried has been in for just about 20 minutes or so. It's kind of to the point where it's a delicate dance because if you leave it in for longer than this, sous vide is always super, super tender as it is. And if you leave it in any longer, I think it's just gonna turn into kind of a mush. Right now, it's, it's a really good texture. I have the smoked salmon in for just a little bit longer. It does have a crust on the outside. It's uh, taking a little bit longer for the water to kind of penetrate the very inside. While we're waiting for that, let's taste the sous vide. It's very good, it's, it's very plain. We didn't put any kind of flavoring or anything in it. Normally I cook salmon with some kind of additive. Uh, you have to be very careful when you're freeze drying though, obviously. I think that the smoked salmon should be done now, so let's try that next. If you didn't know any better, you would think that this was just freshly cooked. And if you know salmon, you know that it's supposed to just flake apart very easily. And this is doing that exact same thing. This is the smoked salmon. It has a nice crust on the outside. It has that nice crust and a darker color. So now let's try the smoked salmon. That one's even better. I like that definitely better than the sous vide. Nothing wrong with the sous vide. Smoked obviously has a lot more flavor. It has some smoky flavor. I also noticed the butter flavor that we kind of injected back into this. I noticed the butter flavor in the smoked and I did not notice it in the sous vide, which is kind of interesting. And my timing appears to be great today because our sous vide just got done. And that actually looks really good. So looks wise, they all look really good. They all look like they could have been cooked fresh uh, sous vide or fresh smoked. This would have been the toughest part of the fish to cook because it's closest to the tail. It's the smallest part of meat, easiest to dry out, but it does look like it's flaky, like it should be. And I really didn't have high hopes for the, the sous vide from raw or the smoked from raw, but let's see uh, how the sous vide did. It's surprisingly good, a little bit more dry than the smoked and uh, a lot more dry than the sous vide uh, that was already sous vide then freeze dried. So now I wanna check in to see how our raw is doing that we're gonna smoke. This is a very thick cut of salmon. It still feels like it needs a little more time to rehydrate, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it do that right now. Well, this salmon has been pretty tricky. This has been, this is a thick piece of salmon and it just was not, it just didn't seem like it was rehydrating fully. So I let this sit in the fridge overnight because I figured if I'm gonna smoke it, it's gonna, it's gonna dry it out anyway. Uh, so I wanted to make sure it was fully rehydrated. Otherwise there was no chance this was gonna work. It has been rehydrated. This has also been brined. And now we have rehydrated it with a little bit of butter or some other stuff. So I think we should be good to go. And we're gonna go low and slow. We're gonna go 180 degrees. We're looking for 140 degrees internal temperature. And then every hour, I like to take some uh, maple syrup and just douse the outside of this with maple syrup. It adds a really sweet, crisp outside to this. Well, here it is. Looks wise, it looks really good. And I've definitely had my doubts on this throughout the whole thing, uh, but this is gonna be kind of the deciding factor. And I think I already know my answer. Um, it's, it's crumbling sort of like you would want it. It's separating from the skin, but just the texture in areas are just, just a little weird. Surprisingly, you know, I thought salmon would do really well, but just for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just because of the high oils in the, in the food itself, or part of it is, looks like it's fine. Part of it doesn't. You know, this has been rehydrating for basically close to probably 24 hours, maybe like 20 hours or something. Let's give it a taste and see. 
The good thing about salmon is smoked salmon really just kind of has like almost like a jerky-ish type texture anyway. It's still really good. Still has smoky flavor, salmon flavor. This was brined, so it has some saltiness in it. And there's no question this is still edible. In fact, a lot of salmon is kind of this texture normally anyway. I think in this form, and actually just any of the forms, this would be really good with some capers and some dip with some crackers, kind of like you've had at parties or whatever. This would be a good use for this, I guess. This is still doable. Definitely not the best way to cook this and rehydrate it. And from what we've learned earlier in the video, I would definitely smoke or sous vide uh, prior to freeze drying. I would not recommend doing raw salmon. It just doesn't really come out right. <laughs> anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you found it helpful, let us know. Give us a thumbs up. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.